Keeping in mind our objective within the audit to give an opinion on the financial statements to be in accordance with whatever standard they are said to be in accordance with, such as generally accepted accounting principles. In order to do that, we will have audit procedures and of course we will need to document that auto, those audit procedures in order to support our decision. Now we're going to be talking more about that documentation, the audit documentation. Audit documentation is auditor's records of the audit procedures performed, relevant evidence obtained, and conclusions reached. So let's read that one more time. The audit documentation, auditor's records of audit procedures performed. So that's going to give us, tell us what did we actually do within the audit in order to get evidence for the assertions being made or for the opinion that we give on the financial statements and then we have the relevant evidence obtained about the evidence that is obtained so we want to document the evidence that is obtained and the conclusion that we reach of course our conclusion will be based on the evidence we're going to go where the evidence leads in terms of the conclusion audit documentation or working papers functions these are the functions of the audit documentation we often call them the working papers working papers being something that we put together on the audit side of things we're going to include the working papers as part of our audit documentation part of our evidence part of our support to our opinion so they provide support for the audit report so when we create the audit report which provides our audit opinion the documentation will of course support that opinion aid in the planning performance and supervision of the audit so as we go through the documentation or as we go through the audit we want to document as we go and the way we document as we go will be in such a fashion that it's going to help us to move forward with the planning performance and supervision of the actual audit process provide a focal point for reviewing work of subordinates helps to provide a basis for quality reviews so the documentation is going to be something that we're going to be using in order to review as well the more standardized the procedures that we perform and the more standardized the documentation of those procedures that we have the easier it is for us to delegate those procedures to others and then review the work that is being done by them audit documentation should show how the audit complied with auditing and related practice standards show evidence for the auditor's conclusion about each material financial statement assertion show that the underlying accounting records agree or reconcile to the financial statements and contain a written audit program explaining auditing procedures necessary to accomplish audit objectives as well as be constructed in such a way to enable an experienced reviewer to so we're talking about another reviewer if we're taking a look at this documentation it's supporting our opinion what if someone else was to look at that documentation and see whether it does indeed support our opinion it has to be constructed in such a way that an experienced reviewer of that documentation could understand the nature timing extent and results of audit procedures evidence obtained and conclusions reached and determine who performed and reviewed the work show that the dates of the work and the reviews of it so the documentation of course should give the evidence and a third party who is experienced with documentation related to audits should be able to understand the nature timing extent and results and the working paper should also indicate who did the procedures and who's in charge as well so we'll often have initials or some type of initial or signature process saying hey this is the person that did the procedure here's the person that uh, reviewed the procedure types of audit documentation files now when we store our audit documentation we're typically going to have a client file and oftentimes it'll be grouped in two types of client files we'll have a client file for the permanent files and then we'll have a client file for the current files. So this is current files, it's gonna be the uh, current information that we're working on, the current audit, the current year that we're gonna be working on. The permanent file, we're gonna have that type of information that's gonna be there for long periods of time. So when you think about these two types of files, if you're setting up your auditing system, you're setting up your system for clients in general, if you're public accounting, oftentimes you wanna think what types of files are gonna be there that aren't gonna change, that I wanna have in a permanent file, they're going to be there for a long period of time what type of files do i want to put in the current file these are files that possibly if i do a yearly audit are going to change each year these are the things that are going to change each year and so that's a typical type of grooming permanent file type of activities the corporate charter obviously that's not going to be something that's going to change all the time we put that in the permanent file uh, significant contracts so if they're going to be long-term contracts for a long period of time we want to have that in the permanent file 
possibly the chart of accounts. Uh, the internal controls is something that uh, could be set up and established for a long period of time. Organizational charts are going to be something that typically have a longer period of time because when we're considering the organizational charts, we're typically thinking of the upper management of the organization term of stock and bonds issued. When we think about the current file, we're thinking about those types of things that are going to happen in 